It's Monday, January 10th, 2022. And in today's episode, the Las Vegas Raiders squeak a victory over the Los Angeles Chargers to clinch a playoff spot. The Indianapolis Colts got embarrassed and lost the opportunity to go into the playoff. And the Washington football team showed the New York Giants who's the real clown show. And of course, Mike Tomlin and Big Ben did it again as the Pittsburgh Steelers are in the playoff. It's Monday morning football with the Guru. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. Now, we're going to talk about the Los Angeles Chargers taking on the Las Vegas Raiders. Man, this was the best game. The last regular season game of the season was the best regular season game of the season. It was an amazing game that came down to the team win and in. That's what it came down to. Win and in. Win and in. Lose and out. I loved it, man. It was a playoff elimination game in a sense. You know what I mean? And just like the Raiders model, baby, just win, baby. And that's exactly what the Las Vegas Raiders did. They just win, baby. And I got to talk about Derek Carr, man. And y'all know my content. I was not really a fan of Derek Carr. I wasn't a fan of Derek Carr. I'm talking Derek Carr was above average guy. You know, he's one of them C-plus students in school. Like, he was not an A student. You know, you know, I don't give him respect like an A student. He's not an A quarterback. But I disrespected Derek Carr. Now, see, the thing about me is when I get more data, I make better decisions. You know what I'm saying? I'm not one of those guys that just because I said something and I'm going to just have my ego and just, oh, my God, I'm very ego. I'm a man. Yeah, I for man ego. And I'm going to stick with my ego. No, man. The guru don't work like that, man. That's not how you become the guru, man. The more information I get, the better decision I make, man. So when it comes to Derek Carr and this season and all this information I've been collecting about Derek Carr, and I'm like, oh my gosh, but I've been disrespecting Derek Carr, man. So now Derek Carr, don't get it twisted. He's not an A quarterback. No, 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 no. I'm not going to that level. No, 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 no. I ain't losing it. I ain't smoking weed or, or meth or anything crazy like that. He's not an A quarterback. He's not. But you know what? He's a consistently B student, man. He's a B quarterback, man. And there's nothing wrong with being a B quarterback, man. If you bring B's in your house, man, most of the time, your parents, unless you might be Asian or something, but if you're not Asian, your parents won't get it. Be like, you know what? You did good, man. You did good, man. You, you're a B student. Nobody's going to be mad. Your mom will talk about you amongst her friends. Like, yeah, my, my child is good in school. Whenever you and your parents said, my child is good in school, that means you're a B student above, man. You know what I'm saying? Derek Carr is a B quarterback. But in this year, in this situation, oh my goodness. Just like in life, sometimes a B student get the right teacher, the right situation, and then for one semester, that B student become an A student. Trust me, I was that student. Me, I was that. I'm an average B. I was a B student, but a couple of semesters, man, I had the right professors. All of a sudden, I was make, I was an A student. I was an A student. So what Derek Carr doing this right now, this season? It's an A performance. It's an A performance. Man, this dude is on a team that has alcoholics, man. This dude is on a team that got alcoholics. This dude is on a team that had a head coach, was a bigot. Was a racist, a bigot, whatever you want to call him. This dude is on a team that got guys that, that want to kill people. That talk about, I'm going to kill you. Like, Derek Carr was dealing with all this nonsense, man. All this nonsense. And he still led his damn team to the playoff. Man, I'm like, oh my goodness. Bruh, the Raiders got a head coach, Rich. I don't even know his name. I don't know this dude, dude. This is this is like this season and the Las Vegas Raiders are driving me nuts. They're driving me nuts because I don't know what they are. They have no identity. Derek Carr is going 20 for 36 for a buck 80 and two TDs. This man is throwing for 180 yards, man. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> 
and they're winning games. I'm like, what is going on? And you know what? It's because of Derek Carr, man. And I've been hating on Derek Carr. I hated on Derek Carr. Yes, I apologize, man. I'm the guru. I, I got better data, man. Derek Carr leadership qualities made him a B plus student, man. You know what I'm saying? I saw them short, man. I'm like, man, Derek Carr is dealing with all this nonsense. You got a, a, a owner, Mark Davis, don't know, a cheap ass owner who's a nomadic owner, move his team every couple of years, man. I'm like, what in the hell is the Oakland or Las Vegas? I don't even know their names. But there's one thing I do know with Derek Carr as their quarterback that is stability. I give it to Derek Carr. One thing you can tell you about the B students. One thing you can say about B quarterbacks, man. You can lay in your bed and sleep good at night. You can sleep good at night knowing at least I have a competent quarterback to lead my organization. And the Las Vegas Raiders got themselves a competent quarterback leading their organization. Oh, my goodness, man. It feels good to be back. It feels good. Hey, hey, Mike Tomlin, you ain't the only one I be dancing, baby. It feels good. Hey, we got to switch. On that note, we got to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Baltimore Ravens. And my guy, Big Ben. Big Ben, baby. Talking about we still here. Talking about who made that track? I was it Drake or something? Talking about we still here, baby. Big Ben talking about I ain't retiring yet. I ain't retiring. All that talk about retirement. Y'all talking about y'all got my grave, digging on my grave and all that. But guess what? One more week. One more week. One more week. Man, look, it's, it's so good I transitioned to the Steelers from the Raiders because I don't know how the Raiders win games. And, oh, my gosh, I watched the Pittsburgh Steelers, honest to goodness, basically every game this season. Every game this season, man. And I can't tell you how the heck, man. It's like this is the craziest team like I ever, ever analyzed in my history of, like, watching this game, bro. It's like they confuse me because this team supposed to be a, a 5 and a 6 and 11 team. Honestly, this team supposed to be like the Miami Dolphins, to be honest with y'all. Like, the Pittsburgh Steelers are supposed to be like the Miami Dolphins, like, you know what I'm saying, 8 and 9, you know what I'm saying? Like, the Denver Broncos, 7 and that, – that's who the Pittsburgh Steelers are supposed to be. Like, they ain't supposed to be in the playoffs. They're supposed to be like the Cleveland Browns record. Like, but when I look at them, I'm like, how in God's green earth do they do this, man? How the, And then it got me thinking, man, I'm like, oh, man. And then it's like the disrespect. Even I, I was part of the disrespect. But I'm turning, just like I said before, leading up to this podcast, man. Uh, leading up to this, it's the more data I have, the better decision I make, man. That's the theme of 2022, man. Collect more data. I ain't no analytical. I ain't no, no, ain't no analytical. It's called data. All that analytical, no, no, it's data. Collect more data, you make better decision. Ain't no analytical, all that nonsense. Anyways, back to my 2022 rant. With Pittsburgh Steelers. How in the hell do they win games? And I'm like, you know what? Mike Tomlin and Big Ben, you guys might be one of the best duo in the history of the NFL, bro. I'm talking about from quarterback coach duo, man. This guy, Big Ben and Mike Tomlin is going down as a top five quarterback coach duo in the history of this football game, bro. You take away Brady and Belichick. You know who does it, who have done it better other than Brady and Belichick, than Big Ben and damn uh, Mike Tomlin, bro. Man, you talking about um, Drew Brees and Sean Payton? Man, they went to one Super Bowl, homie. One. One Super Bowl. And in the middle of their, on their, of their tenure ship, they had a couple of losing seasons in there. We couple of six and ten seasons. We saw that. We saw that in New Orleans. Sean Payton and Drew Brees. Dynamic duo. Yeah, we remember that. You know, Aaron Rodgers and Mike McCarthy, they went to one Super Bowl, man. One Super Bowl. When you talk about quarterback, coach, duo, you don't hear about Tommy and Big Ben, and it's time for you to start putting this in y'all's name, bro. 
in the history of this game. Other than Brady and Belichick, ain't no duo got more victories together, man. Not Joe Montana and not um, um, Bill Walsh. Not John Elway and not, uh, not Mike Shanahan. No, man. Tom Brady and Bill Belichick is the only duo that has a better record than Mike Tomlin and, uh, and Big Ben, man. And I don't understand why people don't recognize this. I don't understand why Mike Tomlin is not known, unanimously known, as the second best coach in the NFL, bro. Like, I don't even know. Yeah, you're going to talk about Andy Reid. But you know what? I saw Andy Reid, baby. I'm an NFC East guy. So y'all could talk about all this Andy Reid situation. I know Andy Reid. I saw Andy Reid, dog, in Philly for 15 years. I saw what Andy was, man. With Donovan McNabb, who is a borderline Hall of Fame quarterback. In some opinion, might be a Hall of Fame quarterback. So don't give me, don't give me no nonsense like Andy Reid didn't have a competent quarterback. He went to four NFC Championship games, man. Andy Reid did not have the same success as Sean, I mean, as Mike Tomlin, bro. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, with Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City, Andy Reid, yes, you see that. But when it comes down to it, man, I think historically, Historically, we have to give respect to Mike Tomlin and Big Ben because they're still here and the Pittsburgh Steelers is still top tier organization. <laughs> oh my gosh, man, we's on fire, man. We on fire, man. They tell us we got to take a break real quick, man. But when we come back from our break, because we're just getting warmed up, right? When we come back from our break, we got to talk about the Colts and the Jags. Yes, you know I got to talk about that win situation, man, because I was wincing watching that damn game, man. This is Monday Morning Football with the Guru. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. Monday morning football with the guru. Appreciate y'all, man. Y'all know the drill, man. I ain't got to preach. I ain't no preacher. It's called Monday morning football, man. Preachers don't work on Monday mornings. They work on Sunday mornings. So I ain't preaching. I ain't no preacher. But y'all know what to do. Y'all support the program accordingly. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the Colts and the Jags, man. This one right here, man. This one right here, man. Nap time. Y'all know how I feel. Nap time. Y'all know I love y'all, man. Indianapolis, y'all know I love y'all. This one right here, man. This was a sucker punch, man. I got sucker punched by Carson Wentz, man. And Indianapolis Colts, I've been saying this in this content. I hope y'all keep watching. If y'all don't, go keep watching, man. Because I've been saying, I got receipts, man. Carson Wentz ain't it in Indianapolis, man. I mean, he's not it. Like I said, the more data I collect, the better decision I make. You know, that's the theme of the show today, if y'all don't get it. And that's the theme for 2022. The more data you collect, the better decisions you make, man. And I got all the data I need to collect on Carson Wentz, man. I got all the data I need to collect. And what I saw this Sunday game when they lost to the Jags to win, to go for losing the opportunity to go to the playoff. Man, Carson Wentz have just lost a, just lost the locker room, bro. Watching this game and watching the reaction and listening to the players' reaction, I'm telling y'all right now, Carson Wentz has lost the locker room. The Indianapolis defensive players has lost respect. I'm talking about they've lost respect for Carson Wentz and they do not believe in Carson Wentz, and that's for sure, man. And I'm not talking about, it ain't no rhetoric, dog. You could see exactly what happened. The Indianapolis Colts did not expect to go in this situation and lose. They did not expect Carson Wentz to play his worst game. It's not even about this game, but it is about this game. But it's really about the last two games. The Colts had two games, two opportunities to win one game, to get to the playoff. And Carson Wentz in those situations became Carson Wentz. It was hard, man. 
It was hard for us to watch Carson Wentz in a situation like this. And Chris Ballard, I'm telling you, I already know Chris Ballard's a top-tier GM. And I already know he already made his decision. I already know he already made his decision. And what happened this last two weeks in Indianapolis just identified and just showed that Carson Wentz is just transitioning from a starting NFL quarterback to eventually being what exactly he's going to be, a backup. Yes, he's going to be the um, the guy that used to play for the Jags. You know, guys, I don't even know their names no more. The backup for, for the Jags. You remember that guy? I don't remember him. Yeah, that guy. That's who's going to be Carson Wentz in a couple of years, man. We've seen guys like this, guys that was the first-round picks, and they became backup. You all remember Mark Sanchez? Yes, Carson Wentz is going to be those guys, man. He just don't have the football intelligence. He don't have the football awareness to be a, a tremendous starter in this league. Yes, he has the arm. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, he got the arm. But he don't have the football mind, man. You know what I'm saying? And I hate to say this, boy. Carson Wentz is one of those things that trick you, man. It's like one of them girls, man. You all remember the school, man. You went to high school. And then one of those special ed kids, man. And she, girl, she had like a fat ass and titties. You're like, oh, man. She had all the assets. But she was special ed. You're like, fuck. That's who Carson Wentz is, man. Carson is like one of them girls with all that, and you like, God damn, you got everything you want. But yeah, you're special. You're like, man, I got to treat you different. I got to approach you different, man. Carson Wentz is just one of them dudes, man. You can't trust him. He looks the part. But yet, mentally, there's just something wrong with him, man. There's something wrong. Like, he's on the, he's on the white bus, for real. He's on the white bus, and Chris Ballard, it's all right. We could keep him. For next year. Yes, that's a band-aid. I ain't say take the trash. That's a band-aid because we need him. So whomever you're developing, because next year is the year to get a new quarterback, a young quarterback. I don't care if he's the right quarterback, but you got to get rid of Carson Wentz. I don't care if you mess up. It don't matter to me, but you just got to get rid of Carson Wentz. It's just that bad, bro. The thing about, the, the thing about greatness, anything about success, you see it early, man. Success is not a late bloomer. That's not, it don't work like that. Success and prodigy, if you're good, people know you're good early, bro. Early, you, they know if you're good, man. Kyler Murray, we know Kyler Murray's a good, boom, early. Joe Burris, we know Joe Burris is a beast, early. But then you have other guys you don't know. You're like, oh, my God, you don't know. Once you say you don't know, the Baker Mayfields, once you waver like, I don't know, then you know they're not it. It's just that simple. You see, greatness is easy. It's either you are or you're not. There's no late bloomer in greatness. Carson Wentz is not going to be a late bloomer, great quarterback. No, bro. He don't have it. He's a try-hard guy. You know what I'm saying? He's one of them country kids, man. He, he tries hard. And I'm not trying to go hard on Carson Wentz, but I am. Because I'm a Colts fan, and somebody got to be real and say it, man. Say it, man. It's all right, Chris Ballard. It was not a mistake you made in getting Carson Wentz. That you had to do that, man. That was not a mistake. But you know what will be a mistake? It's keeping the same quarterback over and over and expecting a different result. And that's what you call insanity. And Chris Ballard, you are not insane. Trust me. You are a sane GM. And you will not keep Carson Wentz. Over and over again and expect a different result. Man, Carson wins, bro. Hey, look, bro. Hey, I know y'all. Hey, I know I sound harsh, but I'm emotional right now, man. I'm emotional just like the players, just like Kenny Moore, just like Darius Leonard, just like those guys. I'm emotional right now, man. If I'm Carson wins, bro, you, you better go hiding, man. Take your ass, go hunting in Montana somewhere, man, because you're just a try hard, man. You just. Man, you ain't it, bro. You know what I'm saying? You and Blake Bortles, that's the guy's name in Jacksonville. He's going to be the Blake Bortles. We all know what he's going to be in a couple of seasons, man. Carson Ass Wentz, man. And I got to get rid of I got to get out of Carson Wentz. I got to move on from, from watching one Wentz game to go Wentz and watching another game. I got to talk about my other team, my native team, the team I was born and raised with. Yeah, I got other teams I flirt with. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love I flirt with the Colts. Don't get it twisted yet. Yeah. But my bleed team, my Washington football team, taking on the New York football giants, man. 
And excuse me, I got a cough. Because I got a cough on some J Coach Joe Judd bullshit. I got a cough. Give me a second. <coughs> yes, I got a cough on some Coach Judd. Y'all saw what happened. Do I do? If y'all don't know, I gotta, I gotta give this. I gotta, I gotta slow it down. Slow it down. Slow it down. Because I'm emotional. I'm excited. About it. I gotta slow down. All right, I'm slow. So now, Coach of the New York Giants. I'm only gonna call his name. I'm gonna just say the coach of the New York football giants and his weekly presser leading to this game against my Washington football team. And when he was talking about the state of the of Giants organization, he was doing his state of the giant address to the Giants fan base. He was like, hey, Giants fan base, believe in me, we could do this. Our organization would develop in. We said, this guy was quote of saying, we're not a clown show organization like other organization. We don't fight each other. You know what? He was taking a little side swap on my Washington football team because we all know the incident that happened the previous week with the um, Payne and Allen in the sideline fighting each other. So the New York football giant coach who has not ever had a winning record ever as a coach, who should not even been a head coach in the league, should have never been hired as a head coach day one, had the audacity to talk about another organization called my, it's a clown show. When I watched the Giants play the Washington football team, man, I was like, you know what I saw? I saw the Giants head coach looking like a clown show. Man, I saw Ringling and Brothers, man. I saw Barnabas and Brave. Whatever, all the circus, the clowns. If you're in the circus, if you are in the circus, they were in New York MetLife Stadium last night, bro. I saw it. Because what the Giants head coach was doing on certain plays, I saw third down, on second down. I saw this dude did a quarterback draw, quarterback sneak, man, from a from a knee, taking a knee position. Man, I'm looking at the play calling on this dude. I was like, oh my gosh, man. He quit. This man quit on the team. There's no other way of saying it. They could be like, oh, he, he just didn't trust the quarterback. Oh, he didn't trust this. What? He didn't trust the what? He didn't trust this. No, he quit. He quit on the quarterback. You know what? You don't trust somebody. That means you quit on them. I don't want nothing to do with you. He's a quitter. He's talking about other organization. He's talking about clown show. He's all that. You are a quitter and you ask me to get fired. Yes, you and ghetto men. Y'all got to go over there in New York, man, because it's a clown show in New York. Starring the New York football giants head coach. And I'm only going to say his name because he's nameless in my show right now, man. Man, I was almost a fan of this dude, man. But he has the audacity to talk about, oh, uh, it's a clown show organization. Bruh, bruh, your organization is the biggest clown show in football right now. Your GM is the biggest clown of GM in football right now. And you talking about a clown show. Get out of here, man. Wearing that red nose, man. Talk my damn clown show. The Giants football coach is a clown. That's what I got to say. Mm, mm, mm. And I was so happy. My Washington football team. Yes, our so-called dysfunctional. Yes, my dysfunctional Washington football team went into New York and straight up made a clown out of Coach Joe You-Know-What. <laughs> oh, man. Forget that dude, man. We're going to take a quick break, man. But when we come back, we're going to talk about a team nobody ever want to talk about but me, man. This is like all about my favorites. We're going to talk about a team. We're going to talk about them Titans. I know, shh, shh. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you what the Titans and NSYNC have in common. This is Monday Morning Football with the guru. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. Yes. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's the G to the U to the R to the U. Welcome to Monday Morning Football with you know who. It's the guru. So check this out. Check this out, though. Check this out. We got to talk about a team nobody ever want to talk about. But I see it seemed like I'm the only one I talk about it. So to all my Titans, to all my Titans, baby, tighten up, baby. Y'all know who it is. It's the guru always showing support to my team, man. My distant, my mistress team. Yes, I love cheating on my real team with this team, man. Like, I love cheating with my on the Titans, dog. I love the Titans, man. They're going to be my mistress forever as long as Coach Vrabel is the leader of the organization, man. And as long as my man Ryan Tannehill is the quarterback of the Tennessee Titans, I will always be my side team. Yes, you all some people have side chicks, side food, side this. I got a side team. And my side team is the Tennessee Titans. I love them, man. They're my side. They're not going to be my main, no. I can't make them my main. I, I'm sorry. I, I know, I know, I know. But they could be my side. And they could be my side forever. Ever, 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 ever. And for some reason, nobody ever talk about my man Ryan Tannehill, who just led the Tennessee Titans to a first overall seed in the AFC playoff race. Like I was telling y'all, you remember when I told you what the Tennessee Titans and NSYNC have in common? They're both going to have bye, bye, bye. Yeah, the guru is corny. Yes, he's corny. He's horny. He's all of that. But there's one thing we do know is I remember the Titans. <laughs> I always remember the Titans, man. The goo is on fire, man. I got to stop it, man. Hey, somebody put a fire off me. No, you can't put me off. You know why? You know why? Because I ride with Tannehill, man. It's like, I think Ryan Tannehill might be the most disrespected quarterback in the whole entire NFL. Since he moved to the tennis, since he arrived in Tennessee, since he's arrived in Music City, since he left the debacle Miami, Ryan Tannehill career in Tennessee, he's been a top five, I mean a top ten quarterback for the last three years, bro. I mean, what are y'all looking at? Look at the charts. Y'all want to talk about analytics, right? You guys are analytic people. You guys want to do technical analysis. Since Ryan Tannehill's been in Tennessee, to what, 2000, what, three years now, first year, went seven and three. Y'all remember, he was sharing time with Mariota. He went seven on three first year. And they went to the AFC Championship game, losing to the um, to the Chiefs eventually. And then year two, he went eleven and five, man, eleven and five, and they lost to the Baltimore Ravens, the Lamar Jackson revenge game. And this year, his third season, Ryan Tannehill is twelve and five, and the number one overall seed in the AFC. What do you see as a technical analysis? You see ascension. You see on a graph. You see the graph going up, man. That's all I see when I see um, Ryan Tannehill in Tennessee. I just see figure roll. I just see him going up, up, up and away, man. And he's been disrespected, man. When he comes to the second tier quarterbacks, when he comes to the B quarterbacks, you all know the B quarterbacks and the leader of the B quarterbacks right now, man. Right now, it's Ryan Tannehill. It's Ryan Tannehill. For the last two, three years, Ryan Tannehill is leading the B quarterbacks. And I'm talking about this include the Dak Prescotts. Yes, the Derek Carr, the Kirk Cousins, all the B quarterbacks, the top ten, the Matty Ices, the, the Jimmy G's, the B quarterbacks. Ryan Tannehill, in my opinion, is the best B quarterback in football, and you guys got to stop it, and you all better start representing and respecting Ryan Tannehill, man. Y'all never talk about Ryan Tannehill when y'all talk about B quarterback. Y'all talk about Dak Prescott. That's what, or Dak Prescott. We talk about Kirk Cousins. We talk about Matthew Stafford. Those are B quarterbacks. But you know what? Ryan Tannehill, the last three years, checked the numbers, man. 
Y'all want to do all that numbers? Check the receipts, man, because I ain't about to spill numbers. This is not no technical analysis channel. Nah, man, this is the Google's channel right here, man. I'll tell you how it is. And what I'm telling y'all is Ryan Tannehill is the most underrated B quarterback in the NFL, and y'all better start. When you talk about B quarterback, I don't want to hear Dak Prescott. I don't want to hear Matt Ryan. I don't want to hear Jimmy G. I don't want to hear Kirk Cousin. I want to hear Ryan Tannehill. The B quarterback of all B quarterback. This man just, I'm talking about, rechange his whole career, man. From being a bum, a bust. You know what I'm saying? Somebody I laughed at. So now to being somebody I admire, man. You know what I'm saying? Do y'all remember Ryan Tannehill doing his finger roll in Miami? I sure didn't. I sure damn didn't. You know why? Because when you lose, nobody cares. Nobody cares when you lose. But when you win, everybody cares. And Ryan Tannehill, like the theme of this show today, the more data I have, the better decision I make. And I have enough data of three years on Ryan Tannehill to let me know if I ever need a B quarterback. A B quarterback. I'm talking about a B quarterback just to pass me by. Just to get me by, I will get Ryan mother effing Tannehill. Tighten up, man. Y'all know I love the Titans, man. Hey, Titans. Ryan Tannehill, I know I dissed you. I know I got more data. I dissed you. I know y'all going to be like, Guru, you dissed Tannehill to my head. Never going to lead the team to the Super Bowl. Look, man, yeah. I, eight weeks ago, yes. I got more information now. You know what I'm saying? I'm not stubborn. I ain't got no ego. You know what I'm saying? No. I have no ego. No ego. That's why we go. Guru, no ego, we go. Now, before I go, I got to talk about one last thing, man. The best thing I've seen, the best thing. I got to talk about Mike Tomlin. I'm not done talking about Mike Tomlin. I'm talking about the dance of Mike Tomlin, baby. IG Live Mike Tomlin. I'm talking about the greatest motivational speaker. I'm talking about the greatest motivational motivator in the history of football, man. I, in, my t in my time, let me take that back. All right? I don't know about them dudes back in the days when they didn't have um, TV and shit like that. I don't know about those guys when they only had radio. I don't know about them damn motivators. I'm talking about since football started in 1990. You know what I'm saying? Since the 90s when football started. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Football started when Madden came out. You know what I'm saying? Nobody cared about football if it wasn't... If it was pre-jaw, man, that did not exist, dog. If you talk about the times the era pre-jaw, man, football, bro, that's no real football, dog. I ain't trying to hear that shit. I ain't trying to hear that shit. I'm talking about through them John Madden era, the best motivator I've ever seen in the game of football is none other than Mike Tomlin, bro. Since the John Madden football era, since what? Madden came out, what, 8, 91 or something? No one's ever motivated than freaking Mike Tomlin, bro. It's so funny, right? Before this show, I was listening to one of my favorite albums of all time. One of my, my favorite artists, Jeezy. My man Jeezy's number one album, Thug Motivation, TM101, Thug Motivation. And my man Jeezy used to always say, I motivate the thugs. You know what I'm saying? The guru was a thug, man. So, you know, Jeezy motivated me. But, you know what I'm saying? That was the days. That was the past. Ain't no thug no more. So then that got me thinking about, damn, Mike Tomlin, man. I'm like, Mike Tomlin is a play, football player motivator. He motivates football players, man. He motivated football players, just like Young Jeezy said in TM101, man. I'm not a rapper. I'm a motivational speaker. Mike Tomlin is like, I'm not a coach. I'm a motivational speaker, baby. I motivate NFL players into being, damn doing what the best they could be. That's what he is. My man Mike Tomlin is the Eric Thomas of the NFL, baby. He's E.T., baby. He's E.T. When Mike Tomlin speaks, you listen, damn it. 
When my tongue speak, you get motivated, dog. Just like the Google. Man, I came from the Mike Tomlin motivational tree. I came from that man. He don't waste no words, man. The greatest motivator to ever cross the sideline since the Madden era. I ain't talking about the era pre-Madden because that don't exist. I'm talking about the era that exists. That is the John Madden football era. If you ask NB, if you ask any Madden, you don't exist. And I ain't talking about the historic team. If you're historic, I ain't talking about that type. So back to being the greatest motivator. I looked at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ain't no damn way with old ass Big Ben. Ben can't throw past 10 yards, bruh. He can't throw past 10 yards. He's slow. He's old. They got a, the offensive line is just in chaos. They have no DBs. They have no second. I don't know how the Pittsburgh Steelers win, but I do know one thing, man. Once you have the motivator, once you have the greatest motivational influencer to ever be on the sideline, it don't matter if your quarterback is a duck. It don't matter if your quarterback is a mason. It don't matter if your quarterback is a damn Rudolph. Red nose. As long as Mike Tomlin is at the helm, the Pittsburgh Steelers are always going to be a threat to be a playoff contender. This is Monday Morning Football with the Guru. Y'all know the drill. Like this. Love this. Share this. And I am out. It's the G to the U to the R to the U.